Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship Him for a minute. Yeah. We worship You. We worship You, Lord. We love You, God. We welcome You. Oh, how we love You. We honor and respect yes. you and love you, God. Yes, Lord. And all yes, the people Lord. said, yes. Amen. I'm telling you. All the people that probably had to kind of figure out why is that service taking forever to get over? Well, I went a little longer today. And the had first some service. preach going. <laughs> but it was a good word. I mean, it was a hard, hard hitting word, but. I feel like God really is confronting some things in our culture. We talked about honor today. It so. was so good. It and, was a uh, great, great word. So. And we're looking forward to hearing round two. Hey, all right. So. At least some of us. Some it, of you are hearing it for the first time. So how many of you are surviving the surprise rain? How many did the, did the rain this week surprise you? Isn't that amazing? I was so happy to have the rain on one side because we haven't had any. But the other side, I was like, man, that was kind of surprising. And uh, anybody have it's to? It's not always fun when you own dogs. Anybody yeah, own dogs, yeah. and you have to go out in the rain. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they go out in the rain. And they love three German shepherds. They love to play in the mud. Yeah, and so do I. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I just we just don't like the cleanup anyway, part. <laughs> but it was a great, great weekend so far. And uh, of course, Best Brenda, you should tell everybody. She's already started because of OTH. How many of you already registered for Opening the Heavens? Yes! So Exciting! You know, yeah, because Opening the Heavens is just a few weeks away. Brenda has already started her fall, what do you call them, decorations? Right? Yeah, I know. I like to change things out seasonally. Come on, ladies. Some um, You like to kind of do... So, I mean, I didn't do, get too pumpkin crazy yet, but I did start putting some of the summer decor away because yeah. I figured September is one big blur yeah, with right. opening the heavens. And so I wanted to be ready for October the 1st. That's just it. But, yeah. Okay, so I got to ask some of you married men in here. All right, so how many of you, your wife, you know, will do all the the decorations, whether it be Christmas, spring, fall, or other. And the men carry and, the boxes. She will, Is that what you're going to say? No, I mean, okay. of course I carry Because you the do box. help me get them out. Of course I do, honey. All right. But anyway, so, but this is the part I want them to know. So she'll say to me, so what do you think? As she looks at the, you know, I look at the grand reveal. I'm like, honey, that decoration right there, those pillows and throw and candles. Oh my goodness. They look amazing. And she goes, uh, they've always been there. How many of you men have been guilty of that? And, and, and <laughs> so what you, each other, you guys are all... <laughs> so what you do is what you do is you go, I know, I know, but what I really, really like is <laughs> this. Thinking that you're gonna hit what she just been working on and you still do the same thing. That's been there forever. So anyway. But you don't give yourself enough credit. Okay. You actually do notice that, you know, right. the colors change a little. You do notice. Um, all I know is this. I had a good nap during a particular football game, and I did get my chili dogs and my mac and cheese, Brenda. Yeah, you did. You did. Because there was some football game on. I ain't going to talk about which one it was. I really don't care. It's not any news. No news. No, no, no. All right. <laughs> I want to do this. I want to greet those of you that are also watching today around the world. And hey, I want to remind you of something that's very important. Um, you can actually watch us live streamed on One Voice TV. So if some of the others, uh, like YouTube or whatever, they decide that they don't like what we're saying or whatever, because you know, they've, they've tried to censor before, you can watch us on One Voice uh, TV. So it's not like you can't well, we get, can't be canceled. We can't be canceled. So I, I just like want to tell you. But I'm going to preach a great word on honor. Um, I'm going to talk about how we can know uh, whether something is honorable or dishonorable. And something that I've learned is all acts of evil is obviously rooted in dishonor. True. But all acts of of good and and rightness and righteousness is an act of honor. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And uh, It's a good, good word, stuff. and the Amen. church needs it. Amen? I think the culture All right, needs it yes, the so culture too. God. All right, are you excited to praise God today? Yeah. Okay, so what, what do we do every Sunday? We throw those hands up high as an act of agreement. Say this, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I expect. I expect. To have a God encounter. To have a God encounter. I came to receive. I came to receive. The anointing. The anointing. Your presence. Your presence. Your word, your, your touch. Your and touch. so, Lord, so 
Lord. My heart is open. My mind is ready. And I know today is going to be a good day. Come on, I think you ought to shout as you praise God. Come on, worship Him in Jesus' name. Oh, how we love and honor you. We ask you to use us. We ask you to anoint us afresh. Oh, precious, precious, precious Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are vessels. Vessels of honor. That's what we are. That's what we declare that we shall continue to strive for. Vessels of honor. Vessels of gold and silver. Honorable to you for your use. Lord, I think about Mark 16. Where it says in verse 20 that the Holy Spirit was working with them confirming the word with signs following Holy Spirit we want to work with you we want you to use us that we can be used powerfully in the gifts Holy Spirit words of knowledge and words of wisdom prophecy discerning of spirits tongues interpretation of tongues gifts of faith workings of miracles and of healings, prophecy. Holy Spirit, we want to work with you in the demonstrations of you, the Spirit of God, with power. And so, Lord, we reach up. I reach up. Those in the sound of my voice, we're asking you, God, to use us. Use us. Put a fresh touch of your holy anointing upon us. The anointing is God, his spirit, his presence upon human flesh, doing what we cannot do in our own efforts. Not of our might or power, but by your spirit. And so Lord, we, we pray for a fresh touch. We pray for you to use us. As we proclaim your good news, as we preach this gospel and demonstrate it with signs and wonders. Thank you, Lord. How many want God to use you? Amen. I know that's okay. How many want God to use you? <laughs> you know, that's, that's one of the greatest desires that I think you can have is not only God, I want to know you. God, use me. Amen. How many of you, you're in this room today and you say, you know what? I, I, I have a need. I, I, I need prayer. I have a need. Raise your hand up high. Okay, keep it up. All right. Now you just ask God to use you in the audience. I want you to find somebody with their hand up right now. Come on. Come on. Keep your hand up so that they know who you are. Get out of your seats. Come on. And I want you to find somebody with their hand up. I don't want anybody to be by themselves. So if you've got your hand up and nobody has gone around you yet, you wave your hand real big and I'll make sure that you have somebody. Because again, you just ask God to use you. It's not of your own ability. It's not of your own power, but it's by the Spirit. Now, if you have your hand raised up, you can put it down once somebody has been by you. If you still don't have anybody by you, just wave it real big. Say, hey, you know, I, there's somebody back there by the pole. There's somebody over there. They don't have anybody to pray with them. Come on, come on, find now. Come on, you don't, if you have three people with one person, somebody needs to break off, find somebody. Come on, we got two people with their hands up waving. I need some Christians. Open your eyes real quick, Christians. Come, come, go, go, find somebody right there. Their hands are up. Good job. Excellent. All right, you just ask God to use you now. Those of you that had your hand up, and I see your hand, those of you that are watching, we're going to pray for you that are watching either in the chapel or online. We haven't forgot about you. I want you to say just one statement, one sense. Don't give your life story. Don't give too much detail away. Say, hey, I need healing. Or you know what? I need direction. I need God's provision. 
okay? So they can pray with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor Brenda, would you mind coming? I'm going to have you come. I'm going to have you address that camera. I'm going to have you pray over the needs of the people. Come on, Pastor Brenda's going to just pray. You continue to pray. She's going to pray for you. I can see your hands like around the world. You're like, hey, Pastor Edgar, Brenda, pray for us. Listen, we pray for you anyway, but we're going to pray for you right now. All right, Pastor Brenda, would you mind? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. You are the God that meets needs. And so we come before the holy throne of grace according to Hebrews 4 and 16. And we thank you that as we come before that throne with boldness, we expect to obtain your mercy. We expect to obtain your help in our time of need. And so, Father, right now we make intercession. We pray on the behalf of the needs of every person under the sound of our voice. And we thank you, Father, that you are the God of healing. You love to heal your people. You heal a spirit, soul, body. We thank you that you're the Father that meets provision. Father, those that have material needs, Father, that financial needs, we thank you, Lord, that those needs are met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, those that need peace and soundness of mind, that are in fear, we thank you, Lord, that there is a peace that passes all understanding, that breaks the power of all anxiety and fear or discouragement, intimidation of the enemy. We say in the name of Jesus, those that are struggling through family issues, challenges. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that family issues would be solved, that there would come an understanding, there would come a resolution, there would come a bringing together, a unification. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you are the God that solves all questions. Those that have questions, Lord, those that need answers, we thank you, Lord, for the answers in the name of Jesus. And we break the power of every demonic stronghold all influence we say in the name of Jesus of Nazareth that the power of the devil is broken over every person in the name of Jesus we cancel every assignment of Satan in Jesus name and we declare God's blessing and his abundant favor over you right now in Jesus name hallelujah 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 come on I think somebody ought to give God some praise Praise Him like you have the answer. Come on, praise Him because you do have the answer. Praise Him because you serve Jesus. He is the Lord of the church. He's a good God. Come on, is there somebody in the house that knows that you serve a good God today? A faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now say this. Say, Lord, I have the answer. I have the solution because you are a limitless God and you're taking good care of me today. Come on, shout amen if you believe that. All right, well, here's what you're gonna do. Let's turn around, okay? I love what Pastor Hank always says, that when we, that we are the church, right? How does the world know that we're his children, his disciples? Because we love on each other. So turn around and find somebody in the behind you or around you. Shake their hand. Love on them a little bit. Tell them you are so glad they're here. Amen. Share your name and love on somebody in God's house. Smile at somebody while the ushers are serving you. You can be seated. By the way, Matthew will tell you also, he does impersonation. Stay here, buddy. He does impersonation. So does Jonathan, our other son. John, I know you're watching. So poor Brenda, you have to put up with a bunch of impersonations. So Matthew, he can do uh, spot on Nick Saban. How many of you know who the Alabama coach Nick Saban? All right, come on, Matt. Only the guys know. Only the guys. Is there any I mean, ladies that know who coach? coach in football? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. here's Nick Saban. This is spot on. Ready? Those of you that are watching while they're serving you, go ahead. Well, personally, you know, we got a big football game to win this week, all right? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to get into details of who my starting quarterback's going to be. Tua Tagovailoa, Jalen Hurts. I'm not going to get into that, all right? I'm tired of the stupid questions from you, the media. I got a football game and a football program to coach, all right? All right? I'm, I'm trying to win a game, you know? And in fact, I might come right. to OTH 2022. 
All right, Jerry Jones, all you Dallas Cowboy fans, meet Jerry. Jerry, come on, go ahead, Jerry. All right. Well, quite frankly, these, these guys, our team is, uh, you know, uh, we're the Dallas uh, uh, Cowboys, and, uh, you know, we can never seem to beat the, uh, the Green Bay Packers. And, uh, you know, our guys have, uh, have struggled to uh, bring home a title uh, since the 90s. Um, you know, and uh, when you look at our guys, this, uh, you know, Pastor Hank, our team is uh, struggling. Dak Prescott That's throws because too they're many the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, and we like to lose games to the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes Matthew and, and John and I will sit around and we'll, we'll do impersonations together. <laughs> I love my boys. All right. You ready to get into the Word of God? I'm here ready to get into the Word of God. <laughs> All right. As you open your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, those of you that are watching, I do want to remind you Tuesday night we'll be on with Flashpoint on the Victory Channel. It's going to be powerful. And uh, then Wednesday night, we will have right here live a prophetic pulse conference call. We're going to be covering a lot of uh, powerful prophetic words that are coming to pass with the news clips that confirm a lot of things that are happening. We're going to talk about China. Uh, there was one particular word about uh, when you see uh, the, the phrase, and God we trust is going to come back, and God gave us the states that you'd begin to see it, that's happening. So many things, and I just want to encourage you, so make sure you're here live, or you can uh, watch online on Wednesday and uh, for the Prophetic Pulse Conference call. It's, I love doing those. How many enjoy that? And uh, it's going to be great. Okay, so I want to talk to you today about honor again. This is honor part two, and um, I don't know how this one's going to come out, but the first one, I must admit, we were, we were hitting some stuff. So, because, it, let me just say this as you go to 1 Thessalonians 4. If there's anything, as I have watched over the last few, few years of what's going on in our country, what's going on in our culture, what's going on in the church, I kept asking inside my heart, Holy Spirit, show me what is really at the root of all of this. Why is our culture, everybody's so mad, everybody's so angry, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people are, are very angry, they're argumentative, if you can't say anything nice, say it anyway, and it's just getting crazy, I mean, the, the politics of what's happened in our nation, you know, the high gas prices, inflation, you know, none of this would, would be happening if it wasn't for the root of dishonor. We need honor back. Amen. If you look at all the things that happen with people getting their businesses burned down, oh, how many know that's, a, that's, a, that's an act of dishonor? People kneeling at uh, the flag, not kneeling because of the flag, kneeling at the flag because they're protesting another issue. Well, that's you know, up to you if you want to protest your issue, but you don't take something that is a unifying symbol in our great nation like our flag. And bring your dishonor and make it a dishonorable issue then. Are you, are you here? There's nothing that unites us greater than we, the people, coming together with our flag, our national anthem. You think about all the things that we've been facing with, with the news media and censorship and, and, and all of that is an act of dishonor. Our Constitution gives us a right to be able to speak up and speak out. Our Constitution has a right for liberty. And think about all the things that have been done to try to steal our freedoms. Yep. Amen? Do you know, I went back to college this week. <laughs> paying off college debt of other people who got in debt by their own choosing. And so the debt was just transferred to other people. So now we're all going back to college again. How many know? You may say, oh, well, pastor, that's such a kind thing to cancel. People say, no, it's an act of dishonor. Why should I pay? That's right. That's right. If they really believe in it, why don't the college institutions cancel your debt? Why are you leaving it up to us, the people who are working hard out here? Can we just be honest? So there's a lot of dishonorable things that are going on, and people are rallying behind it. Oh, you know, let's just, you know, I was at Whataburger the other day in Texas when I was down there, and, and uh, it's, it's a great place. I'm not trying to promote it because I'm a Wendy's guy. I love Wendy's hamburgers. But the point is I like Whataburger, and I don't know what, a, what, a, what, a, what is up. They don't have them up here. 
But we waited 55 minutes at a fast food restaurant to get a hamburger. And, and they're and they like, hey, do you, got, do you want to leave, Pastor Hank? I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. The plane can wait. I'm getting my hamburger and I'm getting my shake. I didn't come this far without a whataburger. But, you know, the lady kept coming out every five minutes. And she kept saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I can't get anybody to work. We are so short of staff. And, and I said to her, I said, well, why can't you get anybody to work? She goes, nobody wants to work. She goes, they're getting handout money. I mean, that's dishonorable. Everybody else is working, but yet now you can get paid to stay home and do nothing. That's called dishonor. Amen. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Welcome to my introduction. Here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. Every one of you. Now, this, right, what we start off with shows that nobody, if you call yourself a Christian, you have no excuse for what I'm about to preach today regarding honor. Are you ready? Every one of you, how many know everyone is what? Everyone. Every one of you, watch this, should know how. So how many know he's saying, listen, Thessalonian church, listen, body of Christ, not one person is going to have an excuse that's worthy of listening to. Not one person, every single person, person and he's getting ready to finish the verse every one of you should know how to possess yourself in sanctification come on that's holiness it's not makeup and hairdo or the length of your dress even though there is the bible talk about modesty and for god's sakes honor our modesty okay we holy people don't like to see everything hanging out we don't like to see your ugly legs or your hairy ones, all right? Are you listening? Every one of you should know how to possess yourself in sanctification, being set apart. In other words, every one of you, it should not be a no-brainer in the body of Christ what is good, what is evil, and what is gray. It should not be hard to identify with what is white, not in the meaning of color by race, but what is white, what is holy, what is honorable, what is right, what is godly, what is good, and what is black, not by race color, but what is black by way of evil. What is compromise? What is dark? What? Come on, what is carnality? Every one of you, in the sound of my voice, Paul writing to the church, no one is without an excuse. You ought to know how to possess yourselves. Come on, have some self-control, some knowledge, some understanding, some action. Come on, when it comes to what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is evil. Come on, what is woke and what is awakening. Come, are, you, are you listening? We need to know the difference. He said, every one of you ought to know how to possess yourself. You know, the biggest problem we have in a dishonorable generation is too many loosey-goosey people that don't know how to possess anything except be possessed by a devil, be possessed by the spirit of dishonor that originated with Lucifer anyway. Come on, think about it. These keyboard warriors that get out on social media and they just got to speak up. They just got to comment. They just got to show everybody that they're right and you're wrong. They got to show everybody that they know everything and they become know-it-alls in their own mind. Because they don't know how to possess themselves. That's why if you come to my page and you want to vomit, guess what? I flush you. If you want to come to my page and puke, and, and, and create arguments and strife and try to get me to get into arguments out there because so-and-so wrote this and so-and-so said this. Pastor Hank, what do you say? Listen. <laughs> I'm going to spray some Lysol. You ain't coming to my page and slithering like a snake. And try to bring me into dishonor. And I'm telling you, listen to me, ministers. Listen to me, Christians. Listen to me, ministries that represent the name of God. Quit allowing people to come to your page and absolutely puke and take a number two. 
There ought to be some kind of high moral standards of honor that say, you know what? I'm not putting up with your filth on my page. If you can't say anything nice, then don't say it on my page. Go write your own page. We become argumentative. We become got to have an answer for everything. Because if I ask in the comment section, it demands an answer. And people aren't even nice anymore. Okay, here, I'll tell you a good one. We have no control right now over closed captioning. Whatever that computer is saying, if they don't capitalize God, that's not my fault. If they substitute my words and turn them into cuss words, that's not my fault. But yet you get people on there. I can't believe that you're using inappropriate words. I can't believe that you're dishonoring God by not capitalizing his name. Hey, I have nothing to do with it. But because we're all so dishonorable, that's what we reduce ourselves to. We become an arguing generation. A know-it-all generation. But really what we become is we become a dishonorable generation. And every one of us should know, according to Paul, how to possess yourself. You know what possess yourself means? It's kind of like this. How many of you ever rode a horse before? Now, we don't know much about that in, in, in Nebraska. But I rode a horse one time. It was more like a water buffalo. He was a big old horse. And I get on him. And I looked in. And I thought, is this a cow? And then, of course, you know, the the the... The horse guide, what do they call him, horse trainer dude, you know, the guide, you know, he's on a stallion, you know, right, thoroughbred or whatever we call it. I love horses, by the way. And, and, and I'm on a water buffalo, and I never rode a horse before, so first thing I did is I kicked his big old belly that was hanging down to the floor, and I said, giddy up, and he just took off. Now, for a guy that's never rode a horse before, it was probably a, a gallop, but man, I felt like that guy was like in the Kentucky Derby. And I'm yelling at this water buffalo horse. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It didn't listen. You're laughing. Why are you laughing? But you're laughing. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm kicking him. And the more I'm kicking my legs, the more I'm encouraging him to go. <laughs> He's like, let's go. And so the, the trainer, or whatever they call it, rides up on his stallion and grabs the reins and pulls it back and goes, whoa. And the thing went, and it stopped. And I said, thank you. In fact, that, that water buffalo tried to run under some trees, cut my head off. I was like, I'm ducking, you know. I didn't look like John Wayne that day, man. I looked like Don Knotts on a horse, you know. And so, but the way to stop that, that horse, I guess is what they called it, was to pull back or possess the reins. Say, whoa, you're not going there. So what is Paul saying? Put our verse back up again. First Thessalonians 4, 4, every one of us, come on, even preachers, yes, Hank Koneman, Brenda Koneman, every preacher in the sound of my voice, should know and Christians how to possess your vessel. In other words, know how to go, whoa, I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that, and I'm not typing that. You ought to know how to possess your vessel. Come on, you ought to know how to possess yourself. No, you need to know how to zip the lip. Bind the mind. Refrain the hand. Right? How do you do it? In holiness. Come on, you know what's right. You know what uh, is proper behavior and what's being polite and when you're not being polite. Come on, you know what's good manners and what's not good manners. You know what's honorable and you know what's dishonorable. He says, listen, every one of us should know how to pull the reins when it comes to acts of dishonor. And we ought to shift over into honor. Now, what is honor? Honor is very important today. Come on, I grew up in a whole different generation. I'm not that old. But I did grow up in, in, in the 70s, and the 80s, and the 90s. I was born in the 60s, late 60s. I was born in 66. But here's the thing. I was raised with more of an honorable uh, expectation, more of an honorable instruction. Okay? I was not allowed at growing up as a kid to disrespect my parents. I was not allowed to talk back to mom and dad. I was not, a, right, mom? I was a great kid. I, I was terrific. Okay, she's in here to vouch. 
But I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to just set my own rules, make my own rules. I wasn't allowed to skip school. Okay, even though, you know, mom didn't know a few times when I just didn't show up. I had, I had other stuff to do. But I grew up where you were expected to be honorable. Not the stuff that you get by with today or people get by with today. You could just see. And I said this last uh, time I preached to you two weeks ago. Even the definition of honor. How many of you have one of those big, huge, um, are they Webster's Dictionary? Is that what they call it? Webster? I mean, Webster's rolling in his grave when it comes to some of the definitions that the woke culture is trying to mess with. He's like, that ain't the right word. But if you look at the definition of honor through the years, you will see that they even shorten. Because even the definition has become less and less honorable. It's become more and more dishonorable. So honor is this. Honor is a high badge code of conduct that you do what Jesus said is the golden rule. You treat others uh, uh, before they treat you. Right? (laughs) Do unto others before they do to you. Right? Right? Talk nasty before they talk nasty to you, right? Get them before they get you, right? That's what people kind of tend to be. But really the golden rule, do unto others as you'd want them to do to you. You know, I've never been racist in my life. I wouldn't even think about it because I wouldn't want somebody to be that way to me. I've been called honky. I've I've been peed on by people of, of a different color of skin. I've literally been peed on by people that were of a different color than me. Okay, I've been shoved up against walls and knives held at my throat. Guns pulled on me by people of different colors. But there's no absolute prejudice in my heart. You know why? Because I'm a man of honor. And I, and I realize that they're not doing unto me as I would do to them. But it doesn't mean that I have to stoop down to their level and become absolutely like they are, that's the problem. We are letting the culture conform us into what they want us to be. They want us to be compliant when it comes to dishonoring like exploiting children and bordering on pedophilia. They want us to dishonor God who established covenant and said marriages between one man and a woman. And they want us to think that, okay, you can marry whatever. You can be whatever. If you're a man, you could be, you could be a woman. There's real no definition. You know, if you want to marry a tree, have intercourse with a tree, whatever you want, anything goes. I'm serious. That ain't it because it's a dishonorable generation. And we got Christians who and preachers, come on, preachers that are stooping down to this stupid, dishonorable spirit that comes from Satan himself. So every one of us, no excuse, should know how to possess ourselves in sanctification and in honor. Now let's talk about this. I asked you this question last week. I want to ask you, those of you that are watching, think about this. What was the first sin? That ever, ever took place. Now, before you answer that, you're going to shout it out to me. Think about this. The Bible says regarding Lucifer, who was involved in the very first sin ever in existence among anything created. Right? Lucifer, Satan, the serpent, the dragon, Revelation 12, 9. Think for a moment, the first sin, the Bible calls it iniquity, was found in Lucifer. Why did it not say sin was found in Lucifer? It said the word iniquity. Why does Jesus say in Matthew 7, you can prophesy in my name, you can cast out devils in my name, you could do mighty, mighty works in my name, but depart from me, watch this, you worker, not of trespass, transgression, sin, but you worker of iniquity. So I asked Marilyn Hickey one day, I said, Marilyn, I, I, I love getting in Bible studies with her. I said, Marilyn, let me ask you a question. What, what, what is iniquity? And she taught me the difference between trespass transgression, sins, and iniquity. And she said, iniquity is purposeful sin. It's why God hates it so much. You, and, and that's why it uses the word work. People work at purposeful sin. 
they work at being evil. Come on, we're seeing some of this in our government, whether it's right, left, or in between. We are seeing people literally on all sides of government working very hard to legislate evil. The rhinos are doing it, the donkeys are doing it, and a bunch of other stupid folk. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's dishonor. So he called Lucifer. Lucifer, you had iniquity. So you had a purposeful sin. You were dwelling on what you did for quite a while. Somewhere it started. How did it start? Well, I want to show you Isaiah 14. And I want to show you how you can recognize anyone in dishonor or honor. I want to show you how you can recognize, are you a person of honor? Are you a person of dishonor? There's two primary ways to to find this out. So Lucifer had purposeful sin. What was the first sin? What did he commit? Come on, anybody yell yell it out. People said pride, selfish ambition. Okay, but it was dishonor. Dishonor was really what was rooted in the iniquity of, or the purposeful bent on evil. It was rooted, it started with dishonor. And notice where this dishonor, I'm going to show you that dishonor was in his heart. People often say, well, you know, uh, what's wrong with that? How many ever heard somebody say, well, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with two dudes that like each other decide they want to get married? Well, what's wrong with that? It's It's a root of dishonor. God called it an abomination. He defined what he wants marriage to look like and be. He said marriage, Jesus, out of his own mouth, is between a man and a woman. So why are you getting soft with your relatives when you're just trying to be nice and you don't want to offend them and you still want to be invited for Thanksgiving and Christmas? My thought is don't invite me. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to love you. If you want to have me come, I'll come. I'll behave myself. But please understand that I don't recognize your union. Not because I don't love you, not because I'm a bigot, not because I hate you. I am honorable to God and his definition. Now, you show up, and Uncle Phil now is, is Uncle, uh, Uncle Hillary or Aunt Hillary. Uncle Phil went to Aunt Hillary. And you're supposed to call Uncle Phil Aunt Hillary. I'm sorry, you're Uncle Phil. Sorry, Uncle Phil, that you identify as Hillary. I mean, you know, they don't know why you want to be identified with Hillary, but anyway. But, but anyway, the point is, I'm not going to adjust to your imaginary world. Your dishonor to God. God says there's only two. There's a male that have male parts, and there's a female that has female parts. And you could take hormones and you could take pills and you can cut things off and you can put things on and you can remake and readjust and make it look like, but you ain't, you ain't that. You're either a born male or female. And then you want us to play imagination games and, and have you go into, dude, a female bathroom with little girls there and you're now, you're now a dudette. No, you ain't. You're a dishonorable person. And your act of going into a woman's bathroom as a dude is dishonorable. That is the root. We don't hate you. We're just telling you the truth. That is a dishonoring act. Not only what you've done to yourself, but now what you want others to play along with your imagination and your definition. No, I honor God. I honor God's definition. And there's no hate with that. That's called truth. It's called speaking the truth in love. Amen. 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 Now, let's go on. Isaiah 14, watch this. So I was studying this, and God showed me something. He said, Hank, I want you to look at this. Because God starts with a question. And notice what the question is. Are you ready? How have you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, Satan, devil, slewfoot of son of the morning. What's the question? How'd you fall? Can I show you how people fall today? Same way Lucifer did. 
How do people finish their race today? That they go to their grave and, 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 and they hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because they lived a life of honor. Why do people fall? Because of an act of dishonor. Okay? How come some of the most powerful people have fallen today by way of adultery? Well, they committed adultery. They ran off with so-and-so. Well, that is a fruit of something. But really, what was in their heart when they were after hotcakes? It was dishonor. Because they had a dishonorable way and a dishonorable act and a dishonorable uh, understanding in their heart that it's okay to sleep on your spouse, they did it. And, and adultery is just a byproduct of the roots and the fruit of dishonor. Why did that person fall? Because they embezzled. Oh, well, really? So embezzlement is just the manifestation of the root of something. You thought that it was okay to steal money, to cheat on your taxes, to take from the people preacher. And God, you may call it embezzlement, the government may call it embezzlement, but really it was rooted when you decided to dishonor God thinking that you can embezzle and cheat. Oh, that person fell. They're a liar. But wait a minute, that's just fruit. It's a fruit of dishonor. If you really honor your wife or you honor somebody, you're not going to lie to them. I would never marry somebody, listen to me, single people, that you found out that they've been just giving you a line of baloney to try to impress you. If they go to that level of lying to try to impress you, you better get rid of them because I tell you what, they're a dishonorable person. If you look at the Ten Commandments, really they're not just Ten Commandments. They're ten state, uh, states, uh, let me say it this way. They're ten statements of honor or dishonor, depending upon what you choose, to keep them in honor or not. Think about it. Thou shalt honor or love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. That is a choice. You can choose to honor him or not honor him. That's called dishonor. You can choose. Thou shalt take, not take the Lord's name in vain. Don't give me this baloney that you use the word GD or JC. I know Christians that cuss and, 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 and use bad language. Oh, that's okay. No, that's, that's, that's dishonor. I don't care if you say, oh, King James, you know, he, he used bad words and put it in scripture. And listen, quit, quit. What others can do, if you're a person of honor, you can't. But let's say it this way. I know Christians that take the Lord's name in vain. They think nothing to say, God blank, Jesus blank. They, they don't think anything of it. Then, if they're not careful, they, they substitute words. Gosh blank. Jiminy. Okay, y'all know it. That's a form of dishonor. Why do you need to say that? Why do you need to substitute those words? We have become, look at the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not lie. Why do people lie? Dishonor. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath day. How come some don't? Because of dishonor. You don't think the church is important. Thou shalt not kill. Doesn't talk about going to war and defending your country. Thou shalt not take an innocent life. That's why it's called murder. Why? Why is that dishonor? Because you didn't give that person a right to live their life. Now, if they're, if they're harming you, if they're coming to harm you and to hurt you, you have three German shepherds and plenty of Second Amendment stuff. Then it is not murder, it's self-defense. <laughs> Thou shalt not steal. Oh, so people that steal, why do they steal? Because you have dishonor in your heart. You have no regard for somebody else's stuff. Come on, college loan. You know why? If, if I had college debt and they wanted to cancel it, I'd say, only if you don't let some innocent person pay for it. If the college wants to forgive it, that's fine. If the professor is wealthy and he wants to forget it, that's fine. But don't put it off on innocent people who have worked hard. That's called stealing and it's called dishonor. Okay? Stealing an election. And then acting like you're the president when you're not. That's why I don't call you president. Because you ain't. And I ain't going to be, I ain't going to join your dishonor. 
Lucifer had dishonor in his heart and got one third of a coup d'etat stolen deal to try to get everybody to get on board with them. I'm not going to get on board with the stolen election. I'm not going to get on board with, with that that's the president, that cackling lady is the vice president. Uh-uh, she needs to fly on her broom and go away. And then, you know, you got the secretary of state of confusion and all that she stands for. I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. And then you, got the, then you got the guy on the Republican side. You know, the Mitch guy. And his wife is so tied into China and what they've done. Oh, really? And I'm supposed to support you too? No. I think there needs to be term limits. You're done. Bye. Get out of here. If we went to the voting booth based on honor and dishonor, we would be putting check marks by a whole lot of different folk than what we do based on party lines. But I can tell you this, I sure as heck wouldn't be putting a check mark next to a donkey because, and their party because of what they represent. And unless they, in what they have been doing as a representative of our country, has been against the platform that the Democratic Party has put out on their website that you can read that is very dishonorable. First of all, it says that they are a party of no uh, religious... What? In other words, it's not that they don't, you know, trying to separate uh, religion from politics. No, they're trying to say we don't want God. It's evident. Okay? That's why they push transgender. That's why they push homosexuality. They're trying to push God and Christianity out. That's dishonor. I'm sorry. I'm not going to vote for you if you're a Democrat unless you can prove to me. Now, guess what I'm doing? Every single Republican... I'm making sure that you aren't a dressed up donkey with rhino horns on. And I'm checking you out. And let me tell you, I'm having to sit there this election and have to go and look in the voting booth with the smell of bacon that stinks in our particular. Supported, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Come on. And I got to sit there and look, okay, do I want to put a check mark by something that smells really rotten as bacon? His name goes with that, by the way. (laughs) Or does it mean I'm going to empower some other demon crap to come in and further steal our freedoms from us? Well, Pastor, you should keep politics out of politics. No. Excuse me. You want me to. And that would be dishonorable. Because my, I, I'm not a hireling. I'm not up here to get your money, to tell you what you want to hear, to try to grow a big church, a big building. I'm here to tell you the truth because I honor God and I'm not going to play games. All right. So, so let's, let's go on. All right. Answer the question, Isaiah 14. Are you ready? I'm almost done. In about another hour. No, I'm not. <laughs> Here's the question God asks, how did you fall? How did Lucifer fall? And then how is it that he was cut down because of his sin that even now, how does he weaken Canada? How has he weakened the United States? Come on, he has weakened our country. He's weakened our military. He's weakened our economy. He's weakened our gas prices by inflating them. The devil has. He's weakened our media where they don't tell the truth anymore. They don't report the news. They make it up. They, they, they propagate it. They create false narratives and, and things to support their agenda. That's not honor. How did he do this? All right, you ready for the answer? Look at verse 13. You, Lucifer... How you're getting by with this in politics and in the nations and what made you fall is you said in your heart. It all started where you allowed something to fester in your heart. A person who's unfaithful to their spouse didn't wake up one day and decide they're going to be unfaithful to their spouse. They were thinking in their hearts plenty of thoughts of dishonor, 
of sleeping with somebody else. Maybe they were doing something dishonorable, like they were clicking on a keyboard and looking at stuff they, they shouldn't and fantasizing, and now they're thinking, oh, wow, when I look at, at them <laughs> compared to what I see over here and what I can have. Listen, can I, you and I tell men all the time, listen to me, men. The devil could care less if you're handsome or you're ugly. So when hot cakes, Miss Swivel Hips, comes to you and you are just so flattered that some drop down gorgeous woman is taking notice of you because you're super mosquito looking. No, you ain't. You're ugly. She knows you're ugly. She wants your money. And if you don't have no money, here's what she wants. The demon in her, what the scripture says. It seeks the precious life. It wants your precious life. It wants to absolutely kill, steal, and destroy you. It isn't worth it. So don't you be flirting with nobody. If your wife wants to know who you're calling, don't you go, uh, n- n- nobody. Shut up. Show her the phone and hand it to her. She should have access to every single text, every single contact, and vice versa, lady. He should have access to every single text, woman, and every, come on. And if he tells you and you stay at home with the kids, don't you be looking at soap operas so that when he comes in working his butt off and sweating, you got the house a mess, you got dog logs still on the floor, you got dirty diapers that he's stepping over, dishes piled up as high as uh, the, the Tower of Babel, and you still babble, and he ain't a good husband, and you tell all the ladies on the phone because you're watching soap operas. You are a dishonorable woman. Honor or dishonor comes down to your heart. Look what Jesus said, Matthew 15, verse 8. I'll prove it to you. You get in road rage, right? That person cuts you off. That person made you mad. What do you got to do? You got to let them know, man. You got to follow them. You got to cut them off. Right? You got to get into a road rage with them. Right? You got to show them the forbidden finger. Amen? If you're a person of dishonor, because that's what's in your heart then. But if you're a person of honor, they cut you off. You'll do this. You'll give them a finger. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Somebody makes you mad, you're going to fly off the handle. That's what dishonorable people would. Honor is part of self-control. If you honor somebody, you're going you're gonna to be in self-control. That's why the Bible says an honor person is quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. If you really honored one another as husband and wife, the Bible says don't go to bed, let the sun go down on your anger. If you honor one another, you honor your relationship, you don't go to bed mad. Now, in 33 years of marriage, guess what Brenda and I do? We got smart. We had a disagreement before bed. Here's what we do. Honey, I'm too tired to talk about it, fight about it. She says to me, I'm too tired to talk about it, fight about it. Let's go to sleep and let God fix it. And in the morning, kiss my lips with the dragon breath. All right. And sometimes we're just like, night, night. We're not even going to discuss it. Amen. And then, you know, at, at nighttime, there's a few times I'll bring the olive branch of my leg over to see if I can touch her. You know, she swats it, then I know, keep sleeping, Hank, keep sleeping, keep sleeping. It'll be okay in the morning. (laughs) But if she reaches back and grabs my leg. Game on. Game on. (laughs) Hey, I got to tell you, chapel. Chapel, those of you that are watching around the world, my beloved Shirley said, game on. Come on, Shirley. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) Y'all are crazy up in here. (laughs) I think I'm actually, Shirley, I'm actually blushing up here, just so you know. I'm just, I'm just trying to, just trying to get through this, Shirley. Shirley, help me out now. (laughs) All right, all right. 
That, that's it. All right. <laughs> How do I preach after this now? All right, here we go. So let's go back to Isaiah 14 and then put this verse back up because I got I to re, retake some ground here. <laughs> okay. So how did you fall? How are you affecting the nations? Verse 13, for you said in your heart, this, this was all started in his heart. He said, I will ascend into heaven and I'm going to be above the stars of God, even God himself. Man, you talk about all that I will. I will sit in the mountain of the congregation. People say, well, that's pride. Yeah, it's an it's a, it's a act of pride, but think about it. It's a manifestation of dishonor. The, the, the root is dishonor. If he really honored God, do you think that he's going to try to do a coup d'etat? Do you think that if people really loved our nation that they wouldn't steal our freedoms, let alone our vote or our voice? You think that they would be fighting? You know what? Can I tell you what? I loved what Mike Lindell said. He said, I'm not fighting this isn't about, you know, putting uh, this president back or putting... He said, it's about, it's about the election. It's about the people. It's about, you know what? We just want election integrity. I want election honor. I want to be able to have the right people that are voted in representing us. Don't you? Then this is what's so crazy. Why doesn't our media want to talk about it? Why don't the judges want to talk about it? Why don't the politicians want to talk? Why don't you Christians want to talk about it? Because we've become so desensitized by a, a generation and a society of dishonor. Oh, we can't speak up. We can't say anything. Don't just, you know, they're telling us that it wasn't. So therefore, we just need to believe it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on. You and I both know there's something rotten in D.C. And if you really want, I mean, I'm serious. I don't care who you voted for. You ought to be fighting for the right to know the truth. Because you want honor. I want honor. Don't you want honor? I want honor. I don't want dishonor. All right, let's go. So how did you do this? Well, I'm going to send. I'm going to do all this. And think about how lethal that dishonor is. This is why teenagers, if you're in the sound of my voice, or young adults and your parents or people that love you, your pastor or other Christians say, hey, man, maybe you shouldn't go to that place. Maybe you shouldn't hang around that person. Or, hey, you know, that guy's not treating you right. Oh, but he loves me. No, I think you need to dump him. You know what? Listen, if you get around, if you start getting around people of dishonor and their dishonorable ways, it will begin to affect you. Because the first sin that happened after Lucifer's sin among mankind was dishonor. God said in Genesis, he said, hey, uh, Adam, out of every tree of this garden, you can eat. You can have free reign to every single fruit tree, every single tree. But do not touch this tree the day you dishonor me and you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Listen, you're going to die. And, and, and people think, well, golly, you know, that was so prohibition. No, it was called protection. Just like hell. It's not that a good God sends people to hell. It's because you choose a way of dishonor. And God, who is honorable, can't have evil because evil and dishonor are always attached. That's why I told you the Ten Commandments. Why do people break the Ten Commandments? Dishonor. What's at the root of it? What was at the root of Satan's sin? Dishonor. What was at the root of Adam and Eve's sin? Well, they sinned. No, it was really dishonor. They didn't honor what God said. He said, listen, I'm giving you every single tree except I'm just saying one. And think about Lucifer who was so filled with dishonor. What did that snake do? He used dishonor. Oh, God really didn't say. Oh, it's really not going to happen. You can question God. You can question God's word. Oh, no. And, and that's really what it was. Eve dishonored God. God said, don't do it. She dishonored herself because now she was going to be lost. She's going to be naked, right? Third, she dishonored her husband. Her husband, he did the same thing. He dishonored God. He dishonored his wife. God never told Eve all of those things that, that he told Adam. He, he wanted it to be Adam's job as a protector to tell Eve, hey, Eve, don't talk to snakes. Don't get around snakes. Don't watch soap operas. They're snake-filled. And don't, come on, right? Come on, husbands. Come on, wives. You need to protect one another. There's serpents roaming around. 
That's why if your wife wants to see your computer, let her have it. Let her search your history. Who cares? What do you got to hide? Let her know who you're talking to. Come on, what do you got to hide, Mr. Smooth Thing? I have no secrets. Neither do you, Brenda. Except between each other. We're not going to tell these people. <laughs> but, but anyway, <laughs> the point is, the point is, I don't even know what the point is after Shirley's comment anymore. <laughs> okay. Put up Matthew 15. I got I to gotta be done. Pastor Doug, why don't you come? So again, how did Lucifer get cut down? He said, he said, this is why the scripture says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. People are flapping their jaws left and right. And you can tell by what's coming out of their mouth or what they're typing, right, which is their mouth moving, if they're a person of honor and dishonor. You know, I would never show up to a ministry page and correct them, rebuke them, be nasty, be argumentative. I wouldn't get on and do that. That's why I don't. There's a lot of things that I could school people on. There's a lot of people that maybe I could not school them on, but I could put up a good argument. I could get into a great fight. And I love, I love a challenge. I love, I'm, I'm not afraid of confrontation. But I don't because it's not honorable. Can you imagine Pastor Hank out there arguing with everybody? I wouldn't want that kind of pastor. Another thing I don't want, I wouldn't want a pastor that shows up in shorts and shows his hairy legs and his flip-flops and has this cool muscle shirt on and has to look like, wow, you know, I'm cool, I'm, I'm trendy. No, you're a dishonorable shepherd. You're not even a shepherd. You're a hireling that lets the, lets the culture dictate your Mr. Cool. I, don't, I wouldn't want to be under Mr. Cool. Give me a man of God. Give me a woman of God that's honorable. Why well, are you saying they're not honorable? I'm saying, listen, you know why? It's, it's, okay, let me just say this. Because when, when, when they were coming out with all of the Hawaii Five-O look, remember when the Hawaii Five-O came out among the uh, preachers? Everybody had their Hawaii Five-O shirts, you know, the Hawaii shirts, and they had their shorts, and we had to casualize everything and begin to advertise uh, our coffee. You know, we have... Uh, coffee, we all got creative on what we're going to call our coffee centers. And, and, and we got to, you know, not talk in tongues on Sunday because we don't want to scare anybody. And we push the Holy Ghost out. And, and right? That, all that was dishonorable to God. And, and, and here's what we did. And, and the pastors, you know, they had to be relevant. So let's start Saturday night services to keep up with the culture. Let's, let's change the way we're dressed because people are going to come to church with a guy who is wearing a suit. Can you imagine if President Trump would show up to give a presidential speech dressed like some shepherds, pastors are? First of all, I wouldn't want to see your ugly legs, President Trump. I respect you, but I just wouldn't. Okay, but you, you would not respect his office. And so one day I got into a meeting with some of the pastors, and they're saying, well, you're just old-fashioned, Hank. I said, really? This is pastors. They said, you know, you just got to learn to be trendy. And they were all standing up talking about how you grow your church. And I said, I could care less about your church growth um, seminars and prototypes. They said, most of your church growth seminars, not one of them is found in the Bible. They're based off of business prototypes, like how McDonald's grew their business. And you're incorporating that in the church, and it unfortunately doesn't line up with this. You know how, this, you know how the church grew in the book of Acts? Persecution. You know how the church grew? With bold preachers telling the truth and the power of the Holy Ghost, miracles, signs, and wonders. I said, why aren't you saying any of that? And I said, no, with that, I'm going to leave you with this, pastors. And I said this to him. I said, well, you're all wearing your muscle shirts and, 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 and your hairy legs and trying to casualize everything. I said, let me ask you a question. It's a question God asked me. He said, what's that? God asked me a question. He said, Hank, who was it that designed the garments of the priesthood? Amen. Even down to their underwear. In the Old Testament, it was God. God was the one that said the priest is to wear the garments. He's to wear, he's to wear the stones. You know why? Because God wanted to have a reminder to that priest. You put those garments on. 
You represent God. And you better be an honorable man and an honorable woman in that mantle, that garment that you wear. It's to remind you, do not become carnal. Do not become casual. Do not begin to water down your message, my message, my word. Come on, you are to have a higher standard that you are to lead the people in. Not become like them. And it's a reminder to the people that that should be a man of God. That it should be a woman of God. And they are to, because they're going to have twice the judgment than what any other person will if they preach the word. They ought to have a holy fear. And it ought to be represented with a classy look, with a look that you know, hey, that's, that guy's the pastor. That, that guy is speaking truth. I mean, understand that. Anyway, I don't know why I'm saying that, but anyway. So look at Jesus. Last scripture, stand your feet. How did Lucifer fall? Isaiah 14, he said in his heart, your words, and watch this, your actions. That's your heart. Amen? And look at what Jesus said. Honor is in the heart, so is dishonor. You can trace what people do, what they say, what they write, how they act, not so much based on the fruit of sin or no sin. It's, it comes down to one or the other. Honor or dishonor. Honor or dishonor. Honor or dishonor. And so look at what Jesus said. Last scripture. Pastor Doug, I want you to come. People draw nigh unto me with lip service, with their mouth. And they honor me with their lips. In other words, they say all the right things, but their heart is far from me. So notice where he said, honor is on their lips. But because their heart is not connected in honor... It's not real honor coming from their words, from their mouth. So where did dishonor originate in Lucifer? When he said in his heart, he kept dwelling on it. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be higher than God. Look at me and all my pretty, you know, jewelry and all the stuff that he was wearing. And yet he forgot the one who blessed him with it. We do the same thing. We do the same thing today. We, 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 we drive in our fancy cars our houses, our clothing, and we forget. It's God that decked us out. It's God that blessed us. Amen? Watch your heart. It will reveal if you're a person of honor or dishonor. All right, let me give you another one. I promise you, when, I, when you guys leave, you're going to talk about me, and you're going to talk about this message, and you're probably going to talk about the church. And it will come down to one or two things. Honor or dishonor? I didn't believe anything that that guy said. Wow, you really then are a person of dishonor. I didn't like some of the things he said. It's okay. But if you're an honorable person, you need to swallow my delivery, whether you liked it or not, and look at the truth and apply it to your life so that you can be a person of honor. And I'm going to tell you this last thing. I believe this. People are having all their eschatology scriptures. It's the beast. It's the, it's the tribulation. Gog and Magog and eggnog and China and Russia. And I'm sitting here looking at all of this and I'm, I'm, and I'm going, wait a minute. God said something that would bring his return that we're not paying attention to. We quote all the other scriptures of dishonor, right? The love of many will grow cold. People will be offended. They'll hate one another, right? But we don't ever look at something in verse 14 of Matthew 24. This gospel, the good news of the kingdom shall be preached. Come on, that's honorable. We are to show people, tell people, demonstrate to people how good God is. And then it says the end will come. While we're fighting, while we're having these outbursts of anger and strife and discord, come on. And, and displays of dishonor, that's not promoting the goodness of God. It's not the triumphant church, the glorious church that Jesus is coming back for. That's why I feel like some of that eschatology is full of holes. Because I'm waiting for honor to return back to the church and back to the preachers so that Jesus will come and can come. Amen? All right, God bless you, Pastor Doug. Take it away. I love this man. He's a good man. He's an honorable man. I love you. Bless you. God bless you.
Well, let's give Pastor a hand. Wasn't that a good word? We can use that word of correction to get our lives lined up, get on the right track with God. Amen? That's the important thing, you know, and, uh, and it all starts with honoring God. That's where it starts. If we're going to show honor to God and the fact that he gave his son as the ultimate sacrifice for our salvation, that's where it all starts. And we have a decision to make. We can choose his way or we can choose our own way out of selfishness. And that's another point of honor again. Which choice are you going to make? So what I want to do today is just give you a, a chance to respond because I think this is a great message for us to think about as far as lining ourselves up with what God wants us to do in our own lives. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads if you would with me. And I want to ask you a question today. Is there someone here maybe watching online or here in the room or down in the chapel and you say, Pastor Doug, I noticed today I felt some conviction because I haven't been lining up with the things that Pastor was talking about. I haven't done the things to show honor to God or maybe honor to those that are in your circle of influence. And you want to get yourself right today. This is your opportunity. You know, the good news is that because of the grace and the mercy of God, we have the opportunity, as long as we're alive on this earth, to get ourselves right. And I would rather make the decision today and turn towards God and have myself right than to wait till it's too late. Because multitudes of people are doing that. They're perishing because they waited too late to make a decision. And the word says that there's one way, there's one name under heaven and on this earth that mankind can be saved, and that's Jesus Christ. And it's the same thing if you're, maybe you followed God at one time, but you've walked away and you said, Pastor Doug, I've kind of drifted away. I used to be on fire for God, but my passion has drifted and I'm not walking in the honor that I need to be walking. I'm going to ask you today to just do this. I'm going to ask you to lift your hand. If you would like prayer today, in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand and say, Pastor Doug, I want prayer. I want to get back on the right road. I once was with God. I want to get back. Or maybe you are here and you say, I've never prayed to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to make sure that I have him as my Lord on this earth and also eternally I want to make it to heaven. I want to make that decision. I don't want to go to hell. If that's you today and you want prayer and you say, Pastor Doug, I'm, I want to come back. I want to make that decision. I want to publicly make that decision. I'm going to ask you right now, just lift your hand. We had several that did it in the first service. This was a powerful message on honor. And to show honor to God, don't be embarrassed. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right now if you want prayer. Say, Pastor Doug, I want prayer. I want to get back on the right track. I see a hand over here. I see one here. We're going to open the aisles up here in the center. If you're if you raise your hand, you're on the sides or the center, come on up here. We're going to pray today in agreement. Maybe you need Jesus Christ in your life. You've never accepted him as your Savior. Come up here now. Quickly make your way to the front. Altar team, you can come and be ready also. And we're going to pray in agreement and believe that God's going to touch your life and you're going to get back on track with him. I saw three or four people raise their hands. Don't be ashamed. Let's get it right. Jesus said, if we're ashamed of him on this earth, he'll be ashamed of us. And we don't want Jesus to be ashamed of us. I told the first service, you know, there's the scripture in Revelation 3 about the Laodicean church. Jesus spoke to that church and he said, I don't want you to be hot, to be lukewarm. I would rather you be hot or cold. I said to the first service, no, none of us like to drink a cup of lukewarm coffee. That's gross. You either want iced coffee or you want hot coffee, right? That's what Jesus wants. He wants us to be hot for him. I know there's more people here and you say, Pastor Doug, I've disappointed the Lord and I really need to make it right. And you're, you're a little bit of, uh, unsure about whether or not you want to come up and make it public, but you need to do it. You need to do it now because today is the day of salvation. This is the day that we need to get our lives straight. And here's the good news. This is the good news. There's no condemnation. There's no condemnation. No embarrassment. The good news is if we do a 180 
and turn and walk in the right direction, Jesus forgives us. He puts us back on the right track and he says, well done. And he doesn't even remember the past. So I'm going to give you one more chance to run up here now, if that's you. I know there's more in this room that you're saying, I, I'm just holding back, but I know the Lord's speaking to me. I want to get it right. I want to make it public. And I'm going to walk with Jesus from here on. And I'm going to honor him. Anyone else? This brave young lady has come up here today. Give her a hand. I know you're not the only one in the room, but you were brave enough to do it. And if those of you that are watching online, you join me with this prayer. We're going to pray this prayer together, ma'am. And we're going to just believe God's going to touch you. And I appreciate your heart. You have a tender heart. I can tell that. And you want to do what's right with God. And uh, um, the Lord's working in your life right now. You're making a decision. You're not going to turn back. And, and your life's going to change for the good. God's doing some things in you today. And I'm proud of you. God's proud of you for doing that. Let's just pray this publicly. And you just repeat after me. And uh, we're going to believe God's going to touch you today. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you. I thank you that you sent Jesus to die for me, to take care of any sin in my life, and give me new life. Thank you that Jesus went to the cross. I ask you, Lord, forgive me of any sin in my life. Make me a new creature, and I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for Jesus. Give me wisdom, give me direction and guidance, and I will give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Give this lady a hand, and uh, I, I'm going to ask you... If you would, ma'am, I'm going to ask you to just get with this lady right here, Michelle. I just feel like you need to pray with her and just let's just confirm everything that happened there today. Oh, I have to share. Can I share one more quick thing with you? This is really exciting news, and uh, I just think it's good to testify to these things that happen. It'll just take one minute. First service today, there was a lady and... Um, her friend that drove her here from Des Moines, Iowa early this morning, she came in with a cane, ha needed a cane to walk. And just let's put that picture up. Oh, there it is. She was prayed for during the service today by someone in the, the auditorium. It wasn't one of the pastors, didn't call her up. She just came in and, and someone found out she had a need in the uh, service during the time that pastor had us praying for each other. And uh, she prayed for this lady. The lady gave her cane to me. She has no more pain. She's able to walk on her own. And uh, so that's, that's the testimony. And uh, that's just God's sovereign miracle power working. And uh, we can give him praise for that. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Well, don't forget, Prophetic Pulse is this Wednesday night here in the house. Come join us if you can. And then be back Sunday. Pastor will continue to preach on honor. And uh, thank you.